الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد الله سبحانه وتعالى says في كتابه الكريم after أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لم يكن الذين كفروا من أهل الكتاب والمشركين في مشركين منفقين حتى تأتيهم البينة رسول من الله يتلو صحفا مطهرة فيها كتب قيمة Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitabi al kareem making it clear for us that the mushrikeen, the pagans, and the uh, the Jews and the Christians did not go to stray until after the message became clear. Lam yukun illadina kafaru min ahlil kitabi wal mushrikeen. So the, the people of the book and the pagans did not go astray until after the message became clear to them. And what was that clarity? Rasulun min Allah. It was a messenger from Allah. After the messengers were sent to them, that's when they distorted the message. Reciting the books that were pure books, pure with guidance. Ayul Ahbab. When we analyze those ayats, just on the vahir of their meaning, letting us know how the nations before us, how they went astray, we also see how the people of today, after the message has been made clear to them by the Prophet who said, Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnat al Khulafa al Rashidin al Mahdin. Is upon you my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided predecessors, meaning Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, radiallahu ta'ala, and Majma'in. Khalifat, the four Khalifat. And where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa ati Allah, wa ati Rasul. Follow Allah, or obey Allah and obey the Messenger. So after the message has been made clear from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is when the differences came. After the message is made clear, and some of Ahl al-Bid'ah began to raise their heads up during the time of the Sahaba, like the Qadriya and the Khawarij and the Shia, that they began to rear their heads and distort the message after it was made clear. It was made clear by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his sunnah. And it was made clear by the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een. And that's why the Prophet said, The Prophet said, The best people is those of my generation, then those who follow them, and then those who follow them. So ask yourself, where does Jamaat al Ahbash fit into this? And ask yourself, where do the Diobundis fit into this? And ask yourself, where do the Ashaira fit into this? And ask yourself, where do the Shia fit into this and the Qadriya and the Mu'tazila and the Jahmiya? Where do all these groups who had to devise new names that weren't there during the time of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een? Wala salafa hadhihi ummah. Where did they come up with these new names and new groups and new creeds? The most imperative uh, thing that we need to focus on is that they came up with a new ideology, a new creed after the message was made clear to them from Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam affirmed the the divine names and attributes of Allah azza wa jal, and Allah affirmed those attributes for Himself. This is how we know we know the divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa taala, and what to believe in creed. We know it from the Quran because it's the word of Allah, it's the book of Allah, it's the speech of Allah. And it's perfect. That's how we know our creed. Our creed comes from that. It doesn't come because I, I had a dream and then I woke up and I saw this and I saw that and I devised a new creed. No. It comes up from the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. And the creed does not come except from Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What he espoused, what he affirmed, what he called to, what he practiced, alayhi salatu wasalam. That's how we know. We know it from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Azza wa Jal, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. This is how we know it. And then we know it because it was codified during the time of the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, 
and those after them. This is why those books, those early books of creed from the classical scholars, but you don't find in those books that they were Asheri in creed or they were Diobundi in creed, but they were Salafi in creed. Why? Because the Salaf of this Ummah is referring to who? It is referring to the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala and Majma'een and the Tabi'een rahimahumullah jami'an and the Itba'a Tabi'een rahimahumullah jami'an this is who it refers to. This is where the creed was taken for. And this is where the clarity came from. But it's only those later groups and later sects, and then those early groups and early sects who broke away from that clear uh, p clear and pure message of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala affirmed His divine names and attributes in the Quran. And so Ahlul Sunnah, the Salafis, the Salaf of this Ummah, they affirmed it as Allah affirmed it. Allah said He rose above the Arsh. Then we say Allah rose above the, His throne. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. In a manner that suits His majesty. And we don't negate it. Nor do we change the meaning. Nor do we distort the meaning. Nor do we negate the meaning. And if Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in an authentic hadith, Yanzalu Rabbuna tabarak wa ta'ala kulathulath al-layl al-akhir that uh, Allah Azza wa Jal He descends to the last third of the night every, uh, He descends to the lowest heaven every last third of the night We don't deny that We don't deny it we, And we don't ask how We don't know how We do not know how But we believe in it And then you're safe because this is the minhaj and the methodology of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een. They didn't ask cave. They didn't say, how did Allah uh, nuzzle? They didn't say, how does Allah Azza wa Jal uh, ascend above the throne? They didn't say, how are Allah's hands? They didn't ask these things. They accepted it. And they didn't distort its meaning. Ayyul Ahbab, beware of going astray after clarity and may Allah forgive us of our many sins wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad